if I'm looking in front of me and I'm seeing a sphere, I'm going to draw a sphere up here, right? Then I see the C shape going through it here. I see the thing that it's sitting on. There's like an elliptical thing down here. Maybe I need a center line in there. How's my proportion? Terrible. Needs to be smaller. Gonna, gonna look for where the shadow comes out over here on the table. That ellipse comes out about here somewhere. And it seems to come out from the bottom of this bowl and across that bowl in this direction. I'm not gonna worry about drawing this yet. I'm gonna do one thing at a time today. I'm gonna do some studies. So I noticed that the center of the shadow is actually not horizontal. It's going off that direction a little bit. So maybe I wanna do something off in this direction and sort of understand that this shadow is doing an ellipse something like that probably. The table actually comes out like here. So this part's in shadow. I'm just going to go ahead and do some shadow blocking. I'm going to say all of this is in shadow. I just laid my crayon down on the side and just totally said all of this right here is going to be shadow. Right? So step one. I'll do it over here. Step one, you want to divide the light from the shadow. Step two, divide the shadow into black Let's go black at the deep end and gray up here. Okay, so where am I going to put black? Because I said I have five degrees of light and shadow, right? What's lighter than light is highlight. This is my reflected light. This is my core and this is my cast. Right now I'm not differentiating between core and cast. I'm going to make both of them black. So in my drawing here, this is my cast. I'm going to come here up against the object. I'm going to make it darker. Where I see cast shadow, I'm trying to throw some material down on the paper to darken that up. And I'm going to move from here to there, because as the shadow moves away from the object, it gets lighter. So I'm going to let it get lighter as it moves off into the distance. I'm going to take my fingers, I'm going to smudge and rub it around because I want to darken all that up. Okay, so that's my cast shadow. Now I want to get some core. The core happens at the line between the light and the dark. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to whale on it right there. I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to smudge that. Now, this sphere has contours. If I look at this outline here, it moves in this direction. And it moves in this direction, right? Every mark I make is going to make this rounder if I move my fingers or my tools this direction or this direction. So I make, when I'm shading, I sort of, when I draw a sphere, I shade in the cross contour is what this is called, because this is the contour of the thing. This is cross contour. Then I move my finger across in the other contour. Sort of darken that in. Making sure that I leave here a little bit of reflected light. So this is number three. This is three, my reflected light in here. This is four, my core. This is five, my cast. Right? 
if I go too dark, let's say that I get in here and I start smudging around, I'm like, oh, dang it, I didn't leave any reflected light. I go get my kneaded eraser. I stretch it out a little bit and I tap it around in here or I actually do contour lines down in here. And pull some charcoal up off of that. When my eraser gets dirty, I have to knead it again. I just pull it and pull it and pull it. Till I get some light there. And then I just go back and forth and back and forth into this gradual blending. So I get a gradual contrast between my core and my reflected. Okay, so now I've divided my light into threes. Right, so step one, light from dark. Step two, divide the shadow into black and gray. Step three, make sure you've got some reflected light and everything's supposed to be where it's at. But then finally at the end, I look at my light and my highlight. So my final step is highlight. In this case, I wanna have something lighter here than here. So I'm just gonna take my dirty fingers Rub around up in here. I'm going to take my kneaded eraser to clean up this line a little bit because this line right here isn't so great. And I'm going to re-rub so I get a nice even tone up in here. Then I'm going to take a little bit of a tap or a dab, rub it around a bit, and get back to paper white here. This now is my highlight. This is my light. Core, reflected, cast. When I get this table drawn in, if I want to say which one of these lines did I mean, maybe I come back here and say, this whole background wants to be black. And this is the line that I want you to see out here as the edge of my thing. Not that line in there. Maybe I'm going to repair this a little bit too. So charcoal stuff tells us, as we go with charcoal, it's not so much a line here. This black line doesn't really exist in the draw, in the, um, in the sphere that I see up in front of me. What I see is a transition from this white part of the ball to the black part of the wall behind it. So this line got eaten up by the black wall behind it. And when I'm drawing the black wall behind it, it's really useful for me to come up to my drawing and draw horizontally and vertically because that's a one point perspective. If I wanted to shade this table, I might pull my crayon across going to a vanishing point so that I'm maintaining sort of a perspectival understanding in here. Or maybe I'm just smudging and fudging it, but I'm moving it in the direction of the vanishing point. That's going to become important. When I want to make you see this little cup underneath, I can come in here and say, all right, I'm going to draw with my eraser this part where I see the light hitting. Because I want to go back to paper white because that's light. Sort of doing this shape, right? Then I'm going to have shadow core where the light turns to dark. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put a shadow core in. And that's going to head towards this over here, which should be a gray. I'm thinking black, white, and gray for 90 minutes of a 100-minute drawing. For 90 to 95% of the time, I'm doing black, white, and gray. I'm not worrying about nuances of light and highlight. I'm not worrying about the difference between shadow core and reflected light. So I stay in these first two steps, which is separating light from dark and dividing the shadows into black and gray for 95% of my time in a drawing, okay? So I can come in this drawing and say, well, maybe this edge here should be a little bit more tight up against that edge of the, of the highlight. Put down a line, smudge it around. Maybe this should be a little looser. Maybe I wanna draw that line. This becomes my friend now, this eraser is really going to help me to say, well, this over here 
should be lighter and I want to sort of lighten that up. I would say in general, this is for drawing whites or getting back to paper white, right? If I want to come in here and really emphasize this highlight, I'd use a rubber eraser. The kneaded eraser is for me to lighten up tones. So this becomes my reflected light tool. And then the tool itself becomes my core and my cast. 